mentioned the assassination of journalists. And so I just wanted to kind of get at this because I was I, I watched a speech that you gave. Uh, it's called the Belmarsh Tribunal, mm -hmm. um, which is, of course, addressing the, uh, I guess, the situation that Julian Assange is, is, is in, the persecution by the United States and his collaborator, the United Kingdom, um, and trying to extradite him to the U.S., um, I mean, I really liked your speech. I, I thought it was it got to the point, and I and I and I really liked this point you made. It was like, remember when WikiLeaks came out with these leaks, so this information? Remember how like that felt? Like all of a sudden, like the the dynamic changed. Isn't that great, right? And we've seen the consequences over the long term, per, the the personal costs of that on Assange and and um, you know Chelsea Manning and others um, has been huge, and so. You know, the U.S., of course, has, when it comes to actual journalism and really exposing crimes you know, nakedly, um, yeah, they go after you. And there's all kinds of ways that people get assassinated. And I think there's like the direct assassinations like we're seeing in Gaza, right? Where over, I think the last statistic I saw was like 105 journalists have died since October 7th in Gaza. Um, and that's compared to, I think there was a number there. It was like the amount of journalists that died in like World War II was like less than half of that. So like just to give it a scale, like that is not, a, this is pretty outside the range of what's considered pretty common in wartime, right? And yeah, so I just wanted to speak to that reality of like how, you know, in this sense, the, these, you know, the U.S. empire as well as its collaborator Israel engages in various forms of assassination, basically, or ways to suppress the truth how they go after journalists and so on. Um, yeah, just kind of open that up. Yeah, I mean, there's so much to say. I mean, it, it is, it's crazy what happened to Assange and it's mm. devastating, you know, to see that this man who has done nothing but publish leaks, which is what every news organization should be doing, right? I mean, holding power to account and exposing crimes. That's like the fundamental <laughs> thing mm -hmm. that, that journalism should be based yeah. upon. But I think mm -hmm. that we live in a country, like I said, where it's not just politicians and queer politicians who have to believe in the system and be empire babies. It's also journalists working in corporate media. I mean, I think that was my biggest like shocking realization of how just the system integrates itself and props up something like U.S. empire and why the media fundamentally fails as an institution and under capitalism. And it's the way that corporate media survives and thrives and how it's, um, you know, how it, it basically is generated to, to sustain these myths Yeah, and it is funded and subsidized by the very system that it should be exposing. You know, I mean, when you look at corporate media and you see that it's sponsored by Lockheed Martin or Boeing or, mm -hmm. you know, and this is, this, this goes to some, an institution like NPR, which I thought was like publicly funded for the longest time. And then I realized that it gets big grants from BP. And so how could you report honestly on the, the BP oil spill if you're getting right. funded by BP? Um, and so like, because I've worked for Russia Today and Telesor and other state funded media entities, I, I'm quite clear about the bias that I'm entering into and I yeah. make a point to circumvent that and be very honest about the funding structure and things like that. And I think a lot of corporate media journalists are are not honest about self-censorship and about biases mm -hmm. and how these institutions really work to to filter stories and and suppress the truth and and they're willing agents. I mean, let's be clear, like the, these people are willing agents to this. And so when you have someone like Julian Assange putting the entire journalist industry to shame by exposing so many crimes, um people want it, people are very campused and they, you know, they loved Julian when it was the right time. Yeah. When the Iraq war was, you know, it, these leaks came out and we saw the collateral murder video and we saw things like the Haditha massacre and all of the, all of these horrific atrocities and, and it started to shift public opinion. And so all of that was kind of, it all galvanized and coalesced at a, at a certain time where Julian Assange was very favored. And then as he started to go, you know, with, with the Podesta leaks and the DNC and, um, then, you know, liberals turned on him. And so yeah. they they started to see him as a political enemy instead of doing his job as a journalist. And I, I right. do think that if Julian Assange got 
a ton of a, a trove of documents on Trump, he would have released those too. Um, yeah. But he wasn't given that. He was, you know, he had the Podesta files, which were crazy. And I think I would have done the same thing. Yeah. Um, but it is insane, the character assassinations. To your point, like Israel is very brazen. They go farther than any country in the world. I mean, they are targeting mm-hmm. and assassinating political opponents, dissidents, and journalists. This is a protected category under the Geneva Conventions, even in, in a standing army in an actual war, these are protected civilian categories. You cannot kill journalists marked press. And they are doing that maliciously, intentionally over and over again. But the U.S. tends to do something differently, even though they did try to, you know, they did want to kill Julian Assange. We saw Mike Pompeo and the Trump administration actually did put out ideas. How can we fucking kill this guy. Yeah. Um, but I think that they even realized that was too far. And hey, why kill someone when you can just character assassinate him and throw him in prison in a dungeon and throw away the key? But before they even tried to um, put that out there, they, the media had completely character assassinated Assange. He was a rapist. He was a Russian agent. He was this mm-hmm. and that. He wasn't a journalist. <laughs> and, and so, you know, and so we had just think piece after think piece. Oh, he's not a journalist. Oh, he, he's just hiding out from these sex crimes and he's a pest and this and that. And it just mm-hmm. takes away from the brutality of reality, which is a man who published leaks exposing war crimes is persecuted in an unprecedented way that actually criminalizes not only all journalism, but all dissent in this country. And it's going to be a... Yeah landmark ruling that is going to change fundamentally our constitutional principles that we allege to like revere and protect. And it's the foundation of this fucking great democracy that we all love. Mm -hmm. So it's totally insane. Um, And it's disgusting what's going on. And the character assassinations, I mean, it's really anyone. I mean, look at Wikipedia, the way that I, I'm i portrayed on Wikipedia. I have this huge extensive body of work. I've been all around the world. I've documented so many things. And and when you look at Wikipedia, it's just I'm a truther and I'm I'm a you know an anti-Semite essentially. And I'm a Russian uh, agent. It's like, wow, what mm. really truncated my life work into <laughs> three insults. Um, but it's just because they uh. source from corporate media and corporate media mm-hmm. has a very – you know, clear agenda. (laughs) And they want to discredit and character assassinate journalists who challenge or undermine that in any way possible. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's the way the US likes to do it. It's either ignore or or assassinate your character in in corporate media. And then it just kind of uses the references of corporate media to legitimize these attacks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like you, there's many ways that a person can be killed in the public I right and like with you know with Assange I thought it was interesting because yeah the 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 assassination of his character it's like we can have like he's a kind of an odd dude and idiosyncratic and I'm sure he's got all these like whatever like that's fine like who cares because it's like that's not the point you know and and of course that was always kind of put forward as like that is the point actually it's because he's like this bad guy or whatever and anyway I I just I wanted to kind of make those connections because you know I guess there was there was a, another thing which has to do with the situation in Gaza, which is that, re, you know, regarding your speech that you gave, which was that um, back in 2010-ish, those peri- that period when WikiLeaks was starting to really release all these documents up to about 2016, I guess, um, the, I mean, it's amazing how quickly things have changed. So, like, now much of the information that we're getting from Gaza are people that are there and they're uploading to social media largely right right um so many people are you know this is actually something you talked about in your interview with um saul williams um Mm -hmm. and yeah just the way that technology is sort of allowing us to see things that we otherwise wouldn't so there was just this interesting change that's occurred over time where how you know the rawness of the reality of of what's happening in gaza is now you don't necessarily need an organization like WikiLeaks to pull that off. Um, and that what would happening in Iraq uh, with the U.S. invasion, it did take time for certain types of information to get out, but people weren't able to upload to TikTok or to Instagram at that time, right? So there is this fundamental shift, I think, in how we're um, receiving information at this time. 
for good or for ill. Yep. Yeah, no, it's a, it, right. Exactly. I mean, during the Iraq war, we, we only found out about the massacres of civilians and, and how many civilians were dying and the war crimes, um, through WikiLeaks, because at the time the advent of social media hadn't gotten to the point where Iraqis could be just dictating their reality and undermining what we were being fed by our military and our government. And so that's why WikiLeaks was so essential to facilitate the end of the Iraq war, because once the Iraqi government and you know the, the resistance there understood the, the breadth and scope of war crimes that were you know, happening on the mm-hmm. ground, I think that's what really helped bring that to an end and push U.S. forces out. Um, Fast forward Mm -hmm. to Gaza today. I mean, there's a Haditha massacre happening every single day. There's Milai massacres and Abu Ghraib's happening real time daily. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it is, it it does feel like very dystopian on a completely other level where it's like hyper normalization, like very quickly of, of like another level of brutality. And then not only are Palestinians able to show us this, live streaming their genocide but it's also like like i was saying with saul williams it's like this overlap of like medieval barbaric brutality overlapped with this high technology being able to like Mm -hmm. see Mm -hmm. like you know when we study ethnic cleansings and genocides and the holocaust and we're just like it it's like you have like mental exercises and thought exercises about like how could someone be this evil how how does evil like this like what do these acts look like? Like, how did this actually happen? And and we're seeing it now. Like, you just yeah. turn on the computer and you can look yeah. at your at it, and it's yeah. not just Palestinians like showing us; it's Israelis showing us their unending depravity as they loot and pillage and and kill. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's super disturbing, and it's just getting worse patrick and i and i fear mm. where it's going to go because like i said i mean we're on we're on the precipice of several regional wars that could erupt over this and it's just it's just crazy that here we are 3 months into this genocide and it 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 seems like i don't know yeah yeah um 